Um, and we are now fed and ready to pay attention. I'll call the next case, People v. Hunt. This is a 15-minute mini oral argument on the application. Um, and if you're ready, counsel, you may proceed. Good afternoon. Suzanne Gabar on behalf of Mr. Hunt. My argument is relatively short, which is probably not a bad thing for today. <laughs> um, it's only one issue to address, and, and this is whether or not OV9 was properly scored, uh, whether or not Mr. Hunt placed two or more people in danger of a physical injury or death. Looking at the facts of this case, um, Mr. Hunt entered a home. There was no forced entry. He entered through an unlocked door. Um, he took items from the kitchen. He did not venture anywhere in the house other than that area. The occupants were sleeping. He did not encounter any of them. Um, he was not in their vicinity. He did not have a weapon. And um, the occupants did not realize that this happened well after he was gone. As the dissent points out in this case from the Court of Appeals, we, we are constrained by the language of OV9. We have to look at whether the actions of Mr. Hunt place the individuals in, in a risk of physical injury or death. Other than this being a nighttime home invasion, there is no other aggravating factor. The people in their brief argued that um, the presence of a three-year-old and the possibility that Mr. Hunt was intoxicated by drugs is sufficient to raise this threshold level um, for the aggravation portion to score OV9. But they also agree that mere presence at a crime scene does not necessarily equate to danger, and OV9 should not be scored um, based on what may have happened, but only as to what actually happened. So with that analysis, we need to look at the words of OV9 where, again, as the dissent points out, there is a passive use of a uh, past tense verb, were, <coughs> where an action has to be completed. Looking at what Mr. Hunt did during this breaking and entering, there was, again, no forced entry. He did not have a weapon. The mere fact that this is a, if you even can, uh, quote unquote, this is a violent crime or it's a violent felony, that by itself is not enough to score OV9. We need more to get over what to What do that. we need? Well, if Does he had a weapon, if he encountered the occupants, if there was some why, type of why, assault. Why, why would it require a weapon to place somebody in danger? He could assault them without a weapon, could he not? True, depends. Depends on, on, on the circumstances. My problem did he, did with he the... Need, did he need to actually assault them in some fashion? There need not be an injury, but there need to be facts that to show that there is a likelihood of injury, that something would have happened. Under the facts that we have here, mere presence of the occupants, mere age that there was a three-year-old is not enough. There needs to be more. There was, he was not in their vicinity. Most, most people in Michigan, I would suspect, and maybe around the country, and maybe around the world, would think that they were placed in a situation of, of danger if they had an intruder in their home while they were sleeping in their bed at night, don't you think? But that would mean you'll always score OV9 I'm when- I'm just asking you the concept of whether or not, if I'm at home with my wife and children, and an intruder comes into my home in the middle of the night, would my wife be like, you know, would you like some coffee? Or would she say, maybe we should call the police? But the nature of the offense by itself is not enough to score OV9. We need to look at the circumstances. Yes, breaking and entering is, not, is a violent felony, understood. But those facts on their own is not enough. Is the it just luck then? Do you just go off the notion that it, there's luck involved, that there wasn't an encounter? We would look under the circumstances. That's why sentencing is on a case-by-case -case basis. This is not a situation where I'm saying that OV9 should never be scored or OV9 should always be scored. We look and under the facts, and as the dissent pointed out, because he did not have a weapon, because he did not encounter them, well, we're, because we're, the- we're, I mean, we're trying to give, if we get involved in this case, we have to give a, a definitive interpretation to the statute. We have to create a rule that will be the rule going forward for when this offense variable will be scored and won't be scored. That's why I'm trying to understand what rule you're positing. D does, the, does the victim need to know that the defendant is in the home? Awareness is not, uh, is not a requirement and mere presence is also not enough. The, I think the statute is clear. The statute requires some type of action that would lead to danger. If you look at the cases cited both by myself and the prosecution, there needed to be some type of aggravating factor, whether it was the arson cases or whether it was cases where there was a weapon or a knife. 
the victims needed to be sort of in the line of fire. If under this circumstance, under the evidence that we have here, under these facts. So just so I'm just trying to understand this. So if you're, you have a home invasion in your home, you're in bed sleeping with your family, are you placed in danger if the defendant comes into your room and steals your slippers? Was one factor to consider the proximity of the victim to the defendant? Do they Absolutely. Have to be in the same room is that your position? I'm not saying that's not always. It's not a bright line, bright line rule. That's why we look at it on a case by case uh, basis. However, under well, if these, that's, if that's the case, then there's no reason for us to take this case, right? Because our job is to establish rules that will apply going forward uniformly to all cases all across the state, right? So, that if you're asking us to get involved in this case then you must have a, a sense of what rule you're, you're looking for us to adopt. Well, the rule should be is that there needs to be, the victim has to be placed in danger under the circumstance. There needs to be some action. Um, as the as OV9's language strictly states, because it's the passive verb, it requires some action. So under the circumstances here, it's not enough to score OV9. There will be Judges will interpret it OV9 differently based on the circumstances of each case. I'm not asking to, um, to determine that. I am saying that under the strict language of the statute here, it's not possible to score OV9 because the circumstances don't allow it. The, the trial court clearly erred because the only thing that they relied on that this was a nighttime home invasion. And if that's the law, then every nighttime home invasion, you would score 10 points. And that's not the intent of the legislature here. And that's where the problem lies. The trial court didn't rely on anything else. The only thing, even I believe in, in, um, in the sentencing transcript, it says that because this was nighttime, because it's inherently why, why dangerous. Why do you think that's not what the legislature was, was getting at? There's a home invasion at night with multiple people in the home. The legislature might have thought more people were placed in danger than if there was just one person in the home, for example. And so therefore the defendant should be uh, re receive a higher punishment. But the question here is, is whether or not, you, you we're considering the number of victims, right? So the, the statute says two, to, uh, two or more. So in this case. Two to nine. Uh, two to nine. Uh, in this case, you've got three people that were sleeping that never encountered the defendant. And if you look at the strict language of the statute. But so, wait, wait. so is that the rule? They have to encounter the defendant? We're looking at the circumstances. So if they don't encounter him, what else happened that would, that would place them in danger? Well, why would him having a gun matter if he didn't encounter them? That's one aggravating factor. He doesn't have to have a gun. He could have duct tape. He could have but a there's bat. A, there's other offense variables that deal with having a gun, right? Not this one. I understand, but we're looking at what circumstances lead to scoring OV9. Are we, if, if, the, if you uphold the scoring of OV9 at 10 points, you're, you're saying that any time someone commits a home invasion at night, then we should score 10 points. Yeah, but I don't believe in, that's where the someone, intent. Where someone's in the house, you're, that they're in a place in a dangerous situation. That's what we would be saying. Yeah, that. And but what I don't I'm telling you is if I went on the street and talked to the first person I walked, you know, walked up to and said, do you think you would be placed in a dangerous situation if someone came into your house at night when you were sleeping? I think they would say yes. And I'm just asking you, give me, give me the reasons why that's wrong or that person would be wrong or what, what am I missing? I'm saying that based on the circumstances, not every home invasion where somebody enters into your home, that that by itself would warrant that. It's, it's a, again, the type of the crime by itself, the fact that the crime is dangerous, that does not by itself suffice to scoring OV9. There are other factors that you, when, when sentencing a defendant, but for the purposes of OV9, because the crime is dangerous, that in and of itself does not suffice. If I understand this, you, your position is you don't have to actually be assaulted or injured, and you don't have to, to know the defendant's there, and so it sounds like it comes down to proximity. You have to proximity be is, close is to one. The proximity is one thing, but proximity, in addition to whether or not there was a weapon, in addition to um, you know other aggravating circumstances. Does there have to be an actual physical or verbal threat? I don't think that you need. It depends. It really depends on the circumstances. I think that when you're saying that the possibility of danger, what factors led to that possibility of the danger? So. 
because the occupants don't need to know of the invader, they may not necessarily become aware of the threat. However, is what circumstances led to it. So, and I mean, in some cases I cited, and even cases incited in, uh, uh, by the uh, prosecution, there's always been that threshold. So if there was um, a case where an, um, a defendant threatened an inmate via gun, the presence of the inmate and the guard, that's where OV9 was properly scored because the victims were in his, the vicinity and in danger. In the cases where, uh, the arson cases for example, um, two examples, one case where OV9 was scored because the first responder su uh, suffered um, a flame inhalation, but in other cases where they were able to get them out in time and there was no injury, OV9 was not scored. So it's a, it, because there needs to be something more than the fact that there was a fire or something more that there was a violent crime in and of itself, that's not enough to score OV9, we need more. Okay, so uh, that's where I come to, just because something is dangerous does not mean we should score OV9. You, you twice used the phrase possibility of danger. Isn't that redundant? I mean, either there's danger or there's not. Possible danger and danger to me are the same thing. Well, my, my problem with that is if you're going to say possibly of danger, we can't get into, into uh, the hi hypothetical. There has to be something where danger is imminent or, or some danger that uh, can be equated. So if you look at it, he actually placed them in danger or were placed <coughs> in danger, that's where you're getting the possibility um, if you're going to look at the definition of danger because it may en encompass possibility of injury or death. However, again, there needs to be some type of action. So we're not, um, <coughs> danger is not also a hypothetical definition. There needs to be some action, something that would result in placing the uh, victims in physical, physical injury or danger, and, and, not any type of injury. Entering it's one's taken. home without permission is not enough. I'm sorry, say that again. You say entering one's home without permission is not enough to say the homeowner is in danger when someone enters your home without permission. But that brings me back to my first um, argument is the nature of the crime in and of itself should not be the sole reason why we score OV9. Hmm. So, so what about um, a defendant taking a, a gun in? At, at that point in time. I mean, that's an aggravating factor. So when there is a gun, then there is an, an, an increased chance of physical injury or harm, danger in this case. So that's an aggravating factor that you would consider. And, and again, it doesn't have to be a gun, a weapon, or, or any other um, aggravating factor in this sense, whether it's an encounter, being in close vicinity, or, or having a gun. Isn't nighttime an aggravating factor? Again, but if we're going to say that, what brings me back to my main point is if any, most breaking and enterings are at night, and, and if that's the case, then every nighttime home invasion would warrant scoring OV9, and I don't believe that's what the legislature intended if based on the language. Than, if there's more than two people at home. Let me, let me ask you one more hypothetical. Just so I'm trying to understand what your position is. So I'm there with my wife and my child. There's three of us in the home, and we're sleeping in our beds. And the intruder, who doesn't have a gun or a weapon of any kind, is in, is in the kitchen. And I wake up and I decide to go down and sneak into the refrigerator for the, my, my midnight snack. And I come into, I see this intruder and this intruder sees me. Am I placed in danger then? Because, I mean, there's a, there's a confrontation now with the defendant. That's not the same facts as it is here. I'm just okay. asking you. I'm, I'm trying to understand depends. What your I mean, is. Does what this about what about my wife and child? Are they in danger? Depends on how far they are, the proximity, because there are cases that say the proximity to um, the defendant or to the crime would may result in danger. So there, it's not a yes or no answer. What if what if uh, Justice Viviano's um, hypothetical? He's he's still in his bedroom and he just hears an intruder. He, he does, hasn't gone down in the kitchen. He just hears something and knows that someone is in, in, is in the house. Has that placed him or his family in danger? That doesn't change the, the fact that he was never in, in close proximity with the defendant. So, it, or, so it, does it come down to proximity? Is that's it, that's a significant factor. If there is no encounter and there is nothing else, then proximity, similar to the arson cases cited in my brief, that's a deciding factor. Because if, if, if the, we don't require injury, if we're not requiring injury, then being close proximity of physical injury would be a deciding factor. In this case, that was not, 
Again, he was not in their vicinity, never encountered them, and there is not this additional aggravating factor that would result in it. So, so I, just, I think we're all trying to figure out what, what the, the rule is. So it would require proximity and an aggravating factor. Proximity and aggravating factor because the nature of the crime by itself does not warrant scoring OV9. Obviously having two to nine people, but the yeah, circumstances. Right, yeah, other than the language yeah. specifically in the statute. Okay, thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. May it please the court, <coughs> excuse me. May it please the court, Jack McIntyre appearing on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan. A three person family was placed in danger of physical injury or death when uh, they were present in their home during an especially dangerous home invasion. Um, for this reason, the trial court uh, did not err in scoring OV9 at 10 points. Uh, the Court of Appeals did not clearly err in affirming the trial court, and this court should deny leave to appeal. The first reason uh, that this home invasion was especially dangerous is that the home invader was a stranger. Uh, it's well established as a principle of law that uh, home invasion is gen in general is a dangerous crime. And the reason that it's dangerous is because of the danger of a violent uh, confrontation between the home invader and somebody inadvertently found on the premises of the invaded home. Uh, where that person is a stranger, that uh, danger is magnified. The danger is further magnified by the fact that this home invasion occurred at night. <clears throat> it's well established that nighttime home invasions are dangerous. In fact, the common law offense of burglary could only be committed at night. That was an element of the offense. Uh, it also increases the danger of a violent altercation. Uh, this, this crime was even more dangerous as a result of the uh, defendant invading the living area of a home. This was not as in, for example, People versus Riz Rizbridger, one of the unpublished cases discussed in the brief where it was a, an invasion of a garage. This is an invasion of a home. That's a much more dangerous situation. So in the context of the facts of this case, considering the statutory language at issue, <clears throat> we need to decide what does it mean uh, to say that a person is placed in danger of physical injury or death. And the key word there is danger, and in deciding what danger means, it's appropriate to look to the dictionary definitions of that word. And I cited several dictionary definitions in my brief, but the dictionary definitions are all essentially the same. They all say that danger is a risk of harm. It's not a certainty of harm, it's a risk of harm. And under these facts, uh, clearly this victim family was at risk of harm. Uh, this is also, uh, it, it can shed light on the meaning of a word to consider the, um, antonyms of that word. So the antonyms of danger, according to Roget's thesaurus, are safe and secure. So while this home invader was creeping through this family's house searching for things to steal at night, were they safe and secure or were they placed in danger? Clearly they were placed in danger. And Webster's even uh, expands on this definition usefully by saying danger is the general word for liability to injury or harm either near at hand and certain or remote and doubtful. Based on that definition uh, and the everyday plain meaning of the statutory language, uh, these, this family was clearly pl placed in danger. Where's the backstop to your position? Say I agree with you that a risk of harm or that being placed in danger is a risk of harm, but I'm not prepared to say that any risk because, I mean, you can carry it to any extreme, right? We were, we were pushing your opposing counsel to sort of give us a rule of where the line is, where would you draw the line? Well, where I would draw the line, for the purposes of this case, where I would draw the line is, is the three factors that I already mentioned. When the home invasion takes place at night, when the home invasion is committed by a stranger, and when uh, the home invasion involves the living area of the house. Um, that uh, would require a score uh, for OV9. So do you agree with opposing counsel where she suggested its proximity? Proximity is certainly one factor to be considered, um, but I disagree when uh, counsel says that the victims were not in the proximity of the home invader. Uh, the record reflects that this is a, a relatively small single family house. Uh, the defendant was in the living area of that house. We know for a fact that he was in the kitchen. Um, so he was a, a matter of you know, a few feet. I, I don't know precisely, and the record doesn't reflect precisely how far away he was, um, but he was in a relatively small space. This is, he, he's not, uh, for example, in the garage, and I would, I would contrast uh, Riz Bridger, that's another, I think, useful 
um, factual scenario to differentiate this case from the kind of case where OB9 would not be scored. In that case, uh, the, the offender uh, entered a garage to steal beer from an acquaintance. Um, that's a case where OB9 should not be scored, and I believe that the Court of Appeals got that case right and did not score so, OB9. So do you balance your three factors, or are they a, a you know, all or nothing? So, so let's say it was a stranger um, who invaded or who, who entered at night but not into a living area. Say the basement, or the basement, so, or you're saying the house itself, the garage might be distinguishable. I think the garage is distinguishable, yes. I, I would say that to some degree this is a highly fact-specific inquiry, but if this court is asking me for a proposed rule, the proposed rule that I, I the, the rule that I would propose is a stranger entering the living area of the house at night. That's not to say that uh, people couldn't be in danger under different circumstances, but they are in danger under those circumstances. That's the rule that uh, the people would request. So there's no difference if in one instance somebody is, has a weapon or duct tape or something that indicates certainly more dangerous than someone who's not armed. No distinction between the two. I think those, that certainly would be an important distinction. Uh, and if it's, for example, a, a different factual scenario where it, it's an entry, maybe uh, it's a daytime entry, but he has a gun, then I think it would be appropriate to score OV9. Um, I don't know that, be, because this fact, uh, the, the, the OV is so fact specific, it's hard to create a rule that's going to account for every possible factual scenario, but I think it would provide useful guidance to lower courts if you say that when those three factors are present, when it's, when it's at night, it's a stranger, it's the living area of the house, then OV9 should be scored. Assuming, of course, that uh, people are actually present in the home, which in many home invasions, they're not going to be present in the home. There may be nobody present or it may be only one person. But that's a prerequisite to this OV, right? Yes. Well, what if it's at night, a stranger, in the living area of the home, but the stranger is four foot eight, 90 pounds, and unarmed? Well, I, Your Honor, I, I would suggest that that's still uh, a significant danger because- now, now the homeowner keeps a locked and loaded firearm under their pillow, does that matter? No, I don't think that matters. Be, well, it, it would be a fact that should be considered. I think that's appropriate to consider it. But I, I would say that in the factual scenario that you've laid out, that person is still placed in danger because First of all, do they have access to the firearm? Um, it's possible that, and, and I, my understanding, and I, you know, I, this is not necessarily reflected in the record, but having a weapon in a violent altercation doesn't necessarily always protect the person that has a weapon. It's very often that the, the weapon can be taken away or turned against them. Um, the, the size of the home invader is of limited relevance because- no, but I'm, I'm assuming they get in and out just like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, we're, we're trying to draw lines here, and, and I'm trying to get a sense with the three factors you've given us, stranger at night, living area, is there anything else that needs to be said about the line drawing? I, I don't think it's necessary to say anything else except that uh, where those factors are present, it's appropriate to score OV9 when people are present in the house. That wouldn't necessarily uh, preclude courts from scoring OV9 um, under different circumstances where all of those factors aren't present but additional aggravating factors are present. What if the defendant, uh, it's, it's nighttime, they're a stranger, they open up the backslider, they take, they put one foot in and grab a laptop and quietly leave and, and shut the slider. That's well, in the living space, it's not the garage. Yes, I, I still believe that that would place the residents of the home in danger because of this risk of a violent altercation. When somebody crosses the threshold into your house, at night, a stranger crossing the threshold into the living area of your house at night, that is such a threatening situation that there's a very significant uh, danger of a violent altercation. And that's actually, uh, the, the, in terms of the legislative intent, that's uh, been signaled to us by the Self-Defense Act, which actually creates a legal presumption that when somebody is in, in the home during a home invasion, that person reasonably fears, and I think emphasis, emphasis on the word reasonably, they reasonably fear uh, great bodily harm, death, or sexual assault, which is actually more harm than is required to score OB9. That's an indicator of um, legislative intent, and I think it's consistent with scoring OB9 under the factual scenario that you laid out, Justice Clement. So, so with that, wouldn't then all home invasions get points scored for OB9 if there's more than two or more people in the house? Uh, no, Your Honor, and I, I would point to, uh, again, uh, Risbridger, uh, a case in which uh, an acquaintance of the uh, resident family broke into a garage to steal beer from the garage at night. 
I don't think the, the danger of um, a violent altercation is sufficient under that factual scenario. There are other um, suggestions from the legislature, indicators from the legislature, that they, when they uh, passed the offense variable, offense variable nine statute, that uh, they contemplated this sort of situation um, resulting in scores for OV9. Um, that would include the fact that uh, home invasion is a crime against the person. Uh, this is noteworthy because uh, you can commit a home invasion without actually ever directly encountering anybody. Nobody's in, nobody is necessarily in the home that's placed in danger. Nonetheless, it's classified as a crime against the person. And in the, the mandate from the Sentencing Commission to, uh, from the legislature to the Sentencing Commission said, an offense involving violence against a person shall be considered more severe than other offenses. And when the Sentencing Commission uh, set forth the guidelines, there are all these categories of different, different kinds of crimes, property crimes, drug crimes, uh, public safety crimes, crimes against the person. Crimes against the per person encompasses this, crimes invol involving violence against a person. Now when a person is present in their home while an offender is committing a crime of violence against a person, it's entirely consistent with the legislative intent to say that that person who's, who, that, that uh, victim who's present is placed in danger. And as I said, the Self-Defense Act suggests uh, that in this case, OV9 should be scored. Also, the uh, statutory scheme for home invasion, uh, the, at least one of the potential differences between home invasion first degree and home invasion second degree is there was a person lawfully present in the house, right? So a home invasion second degree, um, the only thing that we change is now there is a person lawfully present in the house. It becomes home invasion first degree. It, be it goes from a 15-year felony to a 20-year felony. It goes from a B grid up to an A grid. That demonstrates that the legislature believed there was significant harm that accrued as a result of somebody being present in the home during a home invasion. Uh, therefore, it's consistent with legislative intent to score OV9 at 10 points under the facts of the instant case. And unless there are any further questions, Your Honor, I think that's everything that I have to say. Thank you, Counsel. So I'll just conclude by saying that the, the people are requesting that this court um, deny leave to appeal because the trial court did not err in scoring OB9 and the Court of Appeals did not clearly err in uh, affirming the trial court. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. We used up all your time on uh, when you started, so the case will be submitted. Thank you both.